If Ukraine loses, NATO will fight Russia, Pentagon chief. Pentagon chief Lloyd Austin believes that if Ukraine loses the full-scale war with Russia, the latter will be forced to fight the entire North Atlantic alliance. Austin said this at the U.S. House Armed Services Committee hearing. Although the hearing focused primarily on Austin's hospitalization at the beginning of the year, about which he did not notify either the White House or Congress in advance, the congressman also asked several questions about how much U.S. military assistance Ukraine requires. The Defense Secretary emphasized that the approval of additional funding for Kyiv is important to prevent a situation in the world where one country can redraw its neighbor's boundaries and illegitimately take over its sovereign territory. We know that if Putin is successful here, he will not stop. He will continue to take more aggressive actions in the region, and other leaders around the world, other autocrats around the world will look at this and will be encouraged by the fact that this happened and we failed to support a democracy, he added. Later, Austin clarified that if Ukraine loses on the battlefield, the Baltic countries may be threatened. If you are a Baltic state, you are really worried about whether you are next. They know Putin. They know what he is capable of. And frankly, if Ukraine falls, I really believe that NATO will be in a fight with Russia, the official said. Russian MFA spokeswoman Maria Zakharova commented on Austin's statement, Is this a direct threat to Russia or an attempt to come up with an excuse for Zelensky? Both are insane. Ukrainian guerrillas spot ships in Novorossiysk used by Russia to shell Ukraine. Ukrainian guerrillas have spotted Russian ships in Novorossiysk from which the occupiers are shelling Ukraine. In particular, they took part in the attack on February the 7th, according to the Atesh guerrilla movement. Agents of our movement report the deployment of several missile ships in the port of Novorossiysk, the statement reads. In particular, the following were spotted. A small missile corvette of Project 228-800 Karakurt, a small missile ship of Project 21631 Buyan M. According to the guerrillas, it was from these vessels that caliber missiles were launched during the shelling of Ukraine on February the 7th. The ships are part of the 41st Brigade of Missile Boats of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. They were redeployed from Sevastopol to Novorossiysk after successful attacks by the Ukrainian Defense Forces. However, they continue to be involved in criminal attacks on peaceful cities, Atesh states. Russia launched a massive attack on Ukraine on February the 7th using kamikaze drones and missiles. Kyiv, where four people were killed and dozens wounded. Kyiv region, Kharkiv, where non-residential infrastructure was damaged. Mykolaiv, where one person was killed. Novomoskovsk, Dnipropetrovsk region and Drohobych, Lviv region were hit. In total, Russia fired 64 missiles and drones at Ukraine. The Ukrainian Air Defense Forces shot down 44 targets, 26 KH-101-KH-555-KH-55 cruise missiles, 3 caliber cruise missiles and 15 Shaheds. Germany models scenario of possible attack of Russia on NATO. The German government has delivered a civil defense risk analysis report to the Bundestag outlining one of the likely scenarios of a possible conflict between an unnamed aggressor and NATO based on lessons learned from Russia's full-scale war against Ukraine. European Pravda reported this. According to the report, Russia's war against Ukraine has confirmed that modern warfare combines classical and unconventional operations, the latter including cyber attacks, disinformation campaigns and sabotage, an aggressor attack, hybrid and or using the full arsenal of modern armed forces in all dimensions on NATO territory, is therefore a likely scenario, the report says. The report's authors then outline one of the scenarios for such an attack, emphasizing that it is only one of the possible scenarios and not specifying what the other scenarios envisage. This scenario divides the conflict into four phases. Phase one lasts for several years with varying degrees of intensity and involves hybrid influence by the aggressor. Espionage, cyber attacks, sabotage and attacks on vital and defense facilities and critical infrastructure. A key feature of this phase is that the hybrid influence is conducted covertly and cannot be immediately linked to the aggressor. Phase two 
lasts several months and involves the deployment of aggressor forces on NATO's eastern borders and the deployment of NATO deterrence forces in response. The hybrid influence continues but becomes more intense and less covert. Phase 3, which lasts for at least one year, involves open military aggression against NATO territory, selective attacks using conventional and non-conventional means, including against targets in Germany, as well as possible disruption of satellites in space. Finally, during Phase 4, the aggressor's troops break through NATO defense lines into Germany. A full-scale armed confrontation in space is also envisaged. The scenario assumes that this phase ends with a ceasefire agreement no earlier than a few months later. In the report, the German government proposes that this scenario should be used as the basis for building a civil defense concept and that the relevant agencies can model further sub-scenarios for more effective defense. It was previously reported that the Bundeswehr is drawing up a new comprehensive operational defense plan for the first time since the end of the Cold War, taking into account the lessons learned from Russia's full-scale aggression against Ukraine.